Have you heard this one? A young woman calls 911 to report a toddler walking barefoot on the side of the road, but it's a trap. The baby is bait. The woman is taken, then she reappears two days later, shaken up but alive. It should have been an inspiring tale of survival. Instead, it was all just a poorly planned hoax. Let's recap. For you and me, but the general public, this story starts on July 13th, 2023, when a strange 911 call came in near Birmingham, Alabama. 911, where's your emergency? Hi, I am on Interstate 459, and there is a kid just walking by their cell. I'm right next to the exit, exit 10 by the Hoover Met, like to get off by the Hoover Met. Okay, so you're before that exit? Yes. And was the child on the left or right side? On the right side. Were they walking northbound or southbound? Um, they're walking towards Tuscaloosa. Walking southbound? Or how old do they look? Um, Like a toddler, like maybe like three or four. Are you with the child right now? No, I'm not. I didn't get out of the car. But when the police arrive, they find no sign of 25-year-old nursing student Carly Russell or the kid. Her red Mercedes is still running. The driver's door is wide open. Her phone, wig, purse, and Apple Watch are nearby. So Carly's story takes the nation by storm. Police search high and low for the missing woman and child, but they never find a clue. And then 49 hours later, a miracle. Carly comes home. She shows up on her parents' doorstep with a cut on her lip, wearing a ripped t-shirt with $107 cash shoved in her sock and she's rushed to the hospital. So she tells police when she left her car to check on the child, a man with orange hair came out of the trees and snatched her. He and another woman blindfolded Carly and force her into their car. They drive for a while and then they load her into an 18-wheeler. So Carly escapes for a moment, but the kidnappers run her down. They toss her into another car and they drive to a home out in the middle of nowhere. And then the couple couple orders Carly to undress so they can take pictures of her. But Carly is a fighter, so she escapes and she runs straight to her parents' house and the family is like, thank God, our prayers have been answered. The whole country takes a collective sigh of relief. Carly Russell is home, but the story is just getting started. So according to Carly's mother, her daughter is a kind-hearted soul. She was always the life of the party and she had a bright future ahead of her. Carly was keeping busy all summer, working part-time at the Woodhouse Spa in Birmingham. Meanwhile, she was taking nursing classes at Jefferson State Community College. And the night she disappeared, she'd just gotten off work at the spa around 8.20 p.m. From there, she drove to a restaurant to grab takeout for her mom. Now, on a normal night, it should only take Carly about 13 minutes to drive from the spa to her exit in Hoover, Alabama, where she lives with her parents. Well, the 911 call came in around 9.35 p.m., over an hour after Carly left work. She claims she saw the toddler before exit 10 on the right side of the road. She could see the child from her car. They were wearing a white t-shirt and a diaper, but they didn't have any shoes on. So dispatch asked Carly to put her hazards on, but they already were. Now this may seem insignificant, but it's a critical fact of the case because surveillance footage from the highway shows Carly's car slowing down and traveling in the breakdown lane. If there was a child walking in the grass, we should be able to see them in her headlights because toddlers are small, but they are not tiny. So Carly pulled over once she got off the phone with 911, thus opens a four minute window between her pulling over and the first police officer showing up. During that window, Carly calls her brother's girlfriend to tell her what's happening. The girlfriend can hear Carly talking to the child, but she never actually hears the child talking back. Instead, all she can hear in the background is passing traffic. And then Carly screams and drops her phone. Now in the footage, you can see Carly get out of her car and walk around to the other side. She opens what looks like the rear passenger door, but it's She's a little hard to track from there. The flashing hazards, the distance, the grainy footage, it all makes it pretty difficult to see what's happening. But police find her car running and her personal belongings left behind. There were no signs of her or a barefoot toddler and nobody called to report a missing kid all night. So already, there's a few facts in Carly's story that don't add up. But 459 is a busy highway. The footage shows how busy it was when Carly pulled over. Well, Hoover, Alabama police chief Nick Durzis found it highly unlikely 
unlikely that nobody else saw this missing kid. But two eyewitnesses came forward saying they saw someone near Carly's car. A trucker claimed that he saw her car with the door open and then another gray car pulled up beside it. And get this, another witness said that they possibly saw a gray vehicle with a white guy standing outside Carly's car. But the highway footage tells a different story. The only car that pulled up near the Mercedes was the responding police officer. So before Carly reappeared on July 15th, this is so crazy, her mother says she got a text from someone claiming to be Carly, saying she was at the Red Roof Inn, about two miles from her home in Hoover. So of course, her family rushes over there, knocking on doors, they're looking for her, but she's not there. Instead, she was knocking on her parents' door soon after that. On July 18th, Carly's parents went on the Today Show to tell their story. They talked about Carly, fighting for her life, mentally, physically. Her boyfriend took to social media to support his girlfriend and, you know, warn off all the haters who thought there could be a chance she's not telling the truth. Well, meanwhile, police were reviewing new surveillance footage and they caught Carly on camera smuggling a bathrobe and some toilet paper out of the spa. Then she took a detour down Route 280 to stop at Target, where she bought a few snacks, including granola bars and Cheez-Its. Now, finally, police got a hold of footage from the night she came home, and they saw her walking alone down a sidewalk in her neighborhood. On July 19th, police put a few more puzzle pieces together. So data from Carly's phone shows that she traveled about 600 yards while talking with 911, as she claims she was following that mysterious child the entire time, which means a toddler walked the length of six football fields barefoot in the dark on a busy highway, and nobody else saw this? In Chief Nick's words, it's just, it's very hard to understand stand, which is a nice way of saying she was full of it. So two days before she called 911, Carly did some interesting research. She googled whether or not you have to pay for an Amber Alert, you don't, and if she was too old to get one, she was. She also searched how to take money from a register without being caught, and she looked up one-way bus tickets from Birmingham to Nashville. And Carly's last Google search was for the movie Taken. You know, the one about Liam Neeson, his daughter gets trafficked? That was the general theory about Carly's ordeal. At first, traffickers used the baby as bait to like lure her out of her Mercedes, but experts quickly jumped in to point out that it's not a thing. Traffickers do not use that kind of tactic, which is kind of a relief. I mean, at least we don't have to worry about the whole baby on the side of the road trick. But that wasn't Carly's only strange online behavior. In the hour before she went missing, she posted three weird tweets. At 8.55 p.m., she posted, today was a great day. God be looking out, I'm telling you. 60 seconds later, she posted, someone to tell you I love you and don't got a reason. And at 9.19 p.m., just about 15 minutes before calling 911, she tweeted, yeah, I want a family now with a crying face emoji. And then on July 24th, 2023, her story took one more big twist. Carly admitted that she faked the entire thing. She never stepped in front of the cameras. Instead, her lawyer read a prepared statement. Here it is. There was no kidnapping on July 13th, 2023. My client did not see a baby on the side of the road. My client did not leave the Hoover area when she was identified as a missing person. My client did not have any help in this incident, but this was a single act done by herself. Imagine her loved one's embarrassment. Your parents went on TV, girl. Her family's disgusted. Her boyfriend broke up with her. Her boss fired her. Her former co-workers are horrified. My word, girl, there are easier ways of getting attention. Now, Carly is being charged for faking her own kidnapping. She got hit with two misdemeanors, false reporting to law enforcement and falsely reporting an incident. She could be looking at up to a year in county jail and $6,000 in fines. And we still don't know why or how? Where was she during those 49 hours? She just eating granola bars and cheese sits in the woods? Was the cash in her sock hers? Did she steal it? Why did she make the whole thing up? Well, Carly is the only person who can answer those questions. Unfortunately, she's the least reliable person in this entire saga. The Boy Who Cried Wolf is a timeless tale dating back to ancient Greece. The lesson still applies today. A liar will not be believed even when they speak the truth. And that's your recap. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a story. We're here Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but don't go away. Catch up on more recaps right here, right now. Until next time, take care.